In 2021, out of the unlisted 51 unicorns, 9 were profitable. That number went down to 6 in 2022. There are so many unicorns in India now. Many of them are profitable. That is, we have a handful number of unicorns that are profitable. India is taking the world by storm right now. Not only is it the fastest growing economy in the world right now, but it's also expected to become a 35 to $40 trillion economy by 2047, according to Piyush Goyal, an Indian cabinet minister. India will be a 35 trillion, 30 to $35 trillion economy by 2047, when we celebrate 100 years of independence. He also mentioned that the desire of every Indian is to become second to none. And as someone who's lived in this country for six years, I've seen that firsthand. And with this in mind, it's no wonder we're seeing tons of Indian startups coming up with unique solutions. Yes, the United States and China are still ahead of India when it comes to startups, but India is picking up the pace every single day. It's emerged as the third largest startup ecosystem in the world with over 99,000 recognized startups across 670 districts in the country as of May 31st, 2023. And just to set a little bit of context here, the number of recognized startups in 2016 was 445. That being said though, most startups aren't successful. Very few become profitable and even fewer become unicorns. As of May 31st, 2023, India is home to 108 unicorns with a combined valuation of $340.8 billion. And just so we're all on the same page here, a unicorn is a company that's achieved a valuation of more than a billion dollars. And a proficorn, which is a relatively new term, is a unicorn that is generating profits. They're not losing money, they're actually making money. And so in this video, we're going to be taking a look at 10 of the top companies in that category, India's top 10 proficorns. So let's start this video off with a bang, a proficorn that many people know and love, Zerodha. Founded by two brothers, Nikhil and Nitin Kamath in 2010. So what we do uh, as a business is we essentially provide a platform for people to come buy, sell stocks, or trade that and whatnot. Zerotha today is a beacon of inspiration for Indian startups in terms of building a sustainable and profitable business. Nikhil and Nitin decided to start this company because they were frustrated with the high fees and lack of transparency in India's stockbroking industry. And so that's how Zerotha was born. In the last 13 years of this company's operations, they have never raised any external capital, meaning that Zerotha is an entirely bootstrapped business, which might call into question their unicorn tag. How can we know if they're worth more than a billion dollars if they've never been valued by VCs. But if we look at their revenue, and especially if we look at their profits, it's pretty clear that the company is worth more than a billion dollars. The thing that I think a lot of people love about Zerotha is that they've broken a lot of myths over the years. For example, the claim that you need to move fast and break things, or the claim that you need to raise venture capital if you want to grow big and fast, or the claim that you need to hire tons of people and then later on fire them. Zerotha has defied the convention of unsustainable building, which seems to be pretty pervasive across the global startup landscape at the moment, although many companies are now trying to change their tune, become more sustainable. And so if we look at Zerotha's numbers, they're pretty amazing. On revenue of 4960 54 crore rupees last year, Zerota's net profits were 2,094 crore rupees. And the company has actually been seeing some pretty steady growth over the last couple of years. So in FY21, their profits were 1,122 crore rupees. The year before that, they were 424 crore rupees. And today, Zerota is the largest stockbroker in India with over one crore clients. All right, next up, it's hard to imagine an ed tech company on this list because the entire industry here in India is just struggling to survive. For example, Baiju's is struggling to pay off their their debts. An academy, after a long struggle of trying to reduce their burn, recently claimed that they had their first ever cash flow positive month. But Physicswella, on the other hand, is breaking tons of records, at least in the ed tech sector. So for FY23, Physicswella's total revenue was 780 crore rupees and its profit was 108 crore rupees. And the simple reason behind this is Physicswella's minimal customer acquisition cost. And so while other ed tech companies are spending hundreds of crores to advertise themselves on TV and on cricket jerseys, Physicswella's customers are actually just loyal students of its rock star founder, Alak Bande. Alak started teaching for free on YouTube back in 2014, and it was only in 2020 that he started his company and started charging students for his courses. He's made a lot of money from this, of course, and so his years of hard work have enabled him to build a sustainable and highly profitable business. All right, next up, we have Inframarket.
Market, which is solving a very challenging problem in India, which is organizing the very disorganized industry of construction. Started by two IAM graduates in 2016, Inframarket connects buyers and sellers of construction materials, and they also provide a variety of value-added services like financing and logistics. This makes the entire process of construction very efficient for people and adds a lot of value to the entire chain. They partner up with a ton of small SMEs to fulfill demand for construction materials like tiles, electrical, sanitary ware, walling solutions, and steel. The company has also partnered with ambitious projects like the Chennai Metro, Delhi Metro, and Mumbai Metro as well. That being said though, this company isn't without its controversies. For example, last year, an income tax rate found that they had booked bogus purchases of about 400 crore rupees. In spite of that though, they made this list because they brought in profit of 186 crore rupees in FY22. All right, this next company has been through many ups and downs, especially since the COVID-19 pandemic. And at one point, they were actually the most valuable Indian startup. They're no longer in that position now, but they've worked really hard over the last couple of quarters to become a cash flow positive business. So they actually just reported their first ever profitable quarter in FY23. And of course, the company I'm talking about here is Oyo. Their impact on India's hospitality sector is really incomparable to any other company, in my opinion. And its founder, Ritesh Agarwal, too, has had an incredible journey. Before starting Oyo, he used to sell SIM cards in Odisha. And one time he had a bad experience booking a hotel room. And so he decided to take on the uphill task of formalizing India's hotel industry. The idea behind the business was simple. He realized that there were a lot of budget hotels that were poorly maintained and weren't able to offer good services. And travelers didn't actually have an easy way of finding these hotels either. And so to solve these problems, Oyo was born in 2013. And today the company has a presence in over 80 countries and 800 cities. They manage a total of 43,000 properties globally with a total of 10 and lack rooms. Now, talking about their numbers, we don't have their revenue for FY23, but for FY22, they brought in 4,780 crore rupees in revenue, and they're expecting to reach 5,700 crore rupees in FY23. And as I mentioned earlier, last quarter was a cash flow positive one for Oyo with a cash surplus of 90 crore rupees. Next up, we have a profit corn that up until very recently was considered the most valuable fintech company in all of India, Razorpay. They're the market leader in India's online payment gateway sector, and the company company was founded by two IIT Roorkee alumni in 2014. So their first startup idea, which I'm sure they're very glad that they didn't choose to pursue, was to build a crowdfunding platform. But then they became aware of a bigger problem. This problem was that online payments in India back in 2014 were really difficult for small and medium-sized businesses, especially e-commerce platforms. And so to solve this, Razor Pay was born. And the company actually started in Jaipur and then later moved to Bengaluru for better opportunities. And for people who aren't aware of their business model, basically, they provide online payment gateway services to companies and charge a small service fee for every transaction. These transaction fees range from between 0.25% to 0.5%. And as of now, Razorpay has more than 8 million merchants on their platform, and they process over $10 billion in payments every single month. Now, coming to the most recent numbers that they've published, their revenue in FY22 was 1,481 crore rupees with a net profit of 7.3 crore rupees. All right, next up, we have India's most valuable SaaS startup, which has happens to be based out of Mumbai, Browser Stack. So the idea for Browser Stack came from a very personal problem faced by the company's founders, who had been working on a website for their previous startup called Downcase. And while they had been able to build the website in just two days all on their own, neither one of them wanted to do the next step, which was testing the website on different browsers. And that was the moment that they realized that this is something that most developers hate doing. This was a problem that they could solve and actually monetize. And so that's how Browser Stack was born. It's an easy to use platform for cross-browser testing of websites and mobile and web applications. And today, over 1 million developers from 200,000 companies use this product, including developers from Google, Microsoft, Amazon, and Meta. Browser Stack has been profitable since its inception and was making $20 million in revenue before it first raised funds from external investors. And the company continues to be profitable and registered profits of 75.3 crore rupees in FY22. Next up, we have another startup that was born out of a personal problem faced by husband and wife co-founder duo Guzzle and Varun Alug. If you don't know the company that I'm talking about yet, it's Mama Earth. So their first child, Augustia, was born with a skin condition called eczema, which is made worse by the various toxins that are present in day-to-day -day skincare products. And so this inspired them both to find a solution for not just their own problem and the problem of their child, but millions of other Indian children that were facing the same thing. And so what they ended up creating were products that were meant to fill the gap of toxin-free mom and baby care products back in 2016. And
And since then, Mama Earth has also created various eye-catching campaigns to onboard customers and promote their products, including a heavy push into influencer marketing, which not a lot of brands back in the day were doing here in India. This enabled Mama Earth to reach the 100 crore rupee revenue mark in just three years of setting up their company, making them the fastest FMCG company to do so in India. And they actually managed to 10x this by FY22, crossing 1,000 crore rupees in revenue. And although the company was sustaining losses most of their journey, it's become profitable for the first time in FY22 with a net profit of 19.8 crore rupees. All right, next up, we have one of the fastest growing consumer electronics brands in India, Boat. So this company was started in 2016 by Aman Gupta, who was a CA earlier and had a passion for marketing and Samir Mehta. And they started Boat when they faced a very common problem that a lot of people with iPhones have, which is that the charging cable back in the day used to break very easily due to poor quality. This prompted Aman and Samir to look at the larger consumer electronics market in India, and they realized that it was dominated by cheap and low quality Chinese products. And so this became the birth of Boat, an affordable, durable, and fashionable brand for young people in India. And this is how the founders of the company describe their brand. They say, we're like Zara of electronics, not highly priced like luxury brands or cheap like Chinese products. Now, one thing to note, of course, is that a lot of Boat's products are assembled and manufactured in China, so keep that in mind. But one thing that worked out perfectly for Boat was their timing, because by 2020, Boat was among the top five largest wearable brands in the world. In FY23, their revenue was 4,000 crore rupees. And while they haven't announced their profits for FY23, for FY22, this number was 68 crore rupees. Next up, we have omni-channel baby care brand, First Cry. So the founders of this company, Sopa Maheshwari and Amitabha Saha, have accomplished something pretty incredible because both of them together have built not one, but two profitable unicorns in India. Apart from First Cry, they've also built a logistics giant called Express Bees. And then apart from these two, Sopam individually has built a third unicorn on his own, a house of brands called Global Bees. But anyways, coming back to First Cry here, the company was started in 2010 when its founders realized that India's baby care industry was worth 50,000 crore rupees, and it was almost entirely offline. And apart from selling baby care products online and offline, one of the unique things that First Cry does is that in the first few days of a baby's life, they'll give the parents of that child a gift box. They partner with hospitals across India to give out these free gift boxes, and when they do, they essentially turn the baby's parents into micro-influencers who post about First Cry on their social media and thank the company for giving them this gift. According to this research, First Cry reaches 12 lakh families in India every single year through this program, making it an incredible marketing campaign. And so in FY21, their revenue was 1,740 crore rupees with a handsome profit of 215 crore rupees. And then finally, there's only really one company that deserves this spot at number one, and that's one of the oldest companies in India's SaaS space, Zoho. Now, you can't really call Zoho a startup anymore. They've been around for way too long to qualify for that title. And so we're kind of cheating by putting them on this list, but we definitely thought that they deserved a spot and some recognition because it's such an impressive company. Its previous avatar, Advent Net Inc., was started in 1996 by Sridhar Vembu and Tony Thomas. And it's pretty incredible that after more than a quarter of a century, this company is still privately owned. They never had an IPO. The company is still owned by its founders. In 2009, Zoho's headquarters were moved from Chennai in India, where the company now has its international headquarters, and they were moved to the United States. And with this, the company's philosophy also changed to made in India, made for the world. Since then, Zoho has built a host of web products and business tools, and it's best known for its online office suite offering, Zoho Office Suite. With over 90 million users worldwide, Zoho's 55 plus products help in sales and marketing support and collaboration, finance, and recruitment. And in addition to its software products, Zoho also offers a number of services like cloud hosting, disaster recovery, and IT consulting. And then, of course, coming to the point of this video, Zoho is incredibly profitable. In fact, they are the most profitable tech company in India, bringing in 2,748.83 crore rupees in profit in FY22. So that was our list of the top 10 profit corns in India. And the reason why we wanted to make this video now in 2023 is that there is a paradigm shift happening in India's startup ecosystem right now, where the focus is less on burning lots of money and growing as quickly as possible at any cost, and actually on building a sustainable, scalable business with profits in mind. And so we've seen this in the case of food delivery startups recently, like Zomato and Swiggy. Both of them announced profitability in the last few months. Then there's another listed company, Paytm, which at the time of its listing in 2021 was loss-making, but has eventually turned operationally profitable earlier in 2023. 
Looking at the EdTech space too, an academy has announced their first ever profitable quarter since the company's inception. And we also have other companies that are on track right now to become profitable unicorns like Ola and PhonePay, for example. This has created a ton of optimism within India's startup ecosystem where you had the public and investors and the market at large putting a lot of pressure on these massively loss-making companies to actually become sustainable, to break even, and eventually to generate profits. And now it looks like a lot of these companies are doing the hard work to make that happen. And I'm definitely expecting that by the end of 2023, we will see more and more Indian startups actually achieving profitability and being proud of that accomplishment. And I'm looking forward to seeing that happen. But until next time, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.